if uh, some of you all is uh, interesting with the water garden that I have in my backyard. So uh, I think uh, it's a good time to um, do a video and record about it and talk about water garden in my rose garden and why I do that. So uh, let's get started. So I built this um, pond. I, you can say it's, a, it's kind of like a, a above ground pond. Um, actually in spring, I think I built it back in February. So this is actually a three months old pond. And uh, so the, the way that it was built is I have my landscaper to kind of build a very simple, um, you can see a very simple uh, raised bed with a box, uh, like a box. And then I, I go to the Lowe's and get this uh, plastic uh, hard shell, um, what do they call it, uh, the hard shell uh, above ground pond. And I put it in the middle and then start filling up with the soil around it and kind of fill and make it into a raised bed. So uh, why do I want to put a water garden? So this one is really because um, I lost my mom in uh, January. So I was uh, pretty sad at the time and I just want to do something to remember her. So uh, that's why I built this and uh, to just, you know, in memory of her. Of her. And it turns out uh, really, really well and I love it a lot. Uh, I think she would be proud of me as well. Um, so uh, this is, uh, so just to show you how I planned this. So my idea is to have a pond uh, in my back in my backyard. So this will be an excellent source uh, the water source for my my bird uh, the beneficial bugs because uh, you need to have some sort of water source for beneficial beneficial bugs uh, bugs to stay and And also I have some fish in there Let me see if I can see them because they are kind of shy When I'm around Okay, you see that fish so you, most of the time they were high uh, behind the, the shaded area because it's so hot. Um, but um, this is a lotus uh, that I moved actually from another, um, it was not in a pond last year, it was just outside by itself in a big tub. And uh, so I just moved it in there and it looks very, very lovely. It get through the winter just fine. So we have, uh, it's a zone 8B here. So our winter can go as cold as 20 Fahrenheit really, which last year we got uh, a few days of that, like 20 something Fahrenheit. And basically the uh, the water is all ice. Like you have three inches of ice for the pond. And uh, at first I thought it would die because this is like, this right here, this, this water lily, it's beautiful, right? And this water lily actually is, uh, we call it a tropical uh, water lily. So at first I thought this is going to, you know, just, just, just not coming back, but it does. And yeah, last year I planted uh, one water lily and it actually come back, give me two more babies. So that's why you see it's so huge right now because this basket actually have tree uh, water lily in it and uh, very very uh, beautiful foliage I love it so much and then uh, this is another variety of water this is a hardy water lily so uh, this hardy water lily I got it from Lowe's actually uh, it's like ten dollars it has a thicker it really has a thicker um, leaf and and the funny thing is you see how it actually uh bloom out with the leaf attached to it so like, like the other water lily i have it's just one stick one bloom but this one has the the bloom and the leaf which is really for me is really cool um so this is a hardy one so the hardy one should be able to take freeze no problem no issue now both all of all of them will die down uh, during the winter, so they would really just die down to the to the ground. Like you, you, you thought it was dead, dead. And, but the the spring come when it's warm up, it will grow back again. So that's just how it looks, you know. And um, 
I have also a Japanese maple right here behind my Buddha. I make this uh, waterfall, but it's kind of blocked by my lotus right now. So you can't really see it, but during the winter time, you will be able to see it when this lotus is, you know, died out. It will just completely just dead. Okay, and uh, and the fish. So I have a goldfish inside my pond. So the goldfish is probably the easiest fish that you can do. Yeah, right there. So the goldfish is probably the easiest fish that you can do um, for the pond. They don't require much care. Um, and uh, I don't really even feed them because, you know, they have a bunch of food right in there because of the plant and also the bugs that, that get inside the, the, the pond. So they grow just fine. They grow very happily in there. Um, during the winter, I do not take them out as well. They stay in the pond. They are not dead. I haven't lost any because of the coldness. So uh, I think they are very cold hardy. Because even though my eyes is like three inches thick, they're still swimming down below the eyes. I mean, they are fine. And and just make sure you don't feed them during the winter time. So um, so you can see the setup is easy. Just a hot shell pond, and I have a this one is a pump and a filter. This feel I really love this pump and filter. I will put a link in the description if you are interested with it. Um, because I try a few, and this is the best that I found so far. It works so well and um, so what I do is it just uh, suck up the water and they filter in there is a built-in UV light inside there that it will kill the, uh, the the algae and then it will release the water back and uh, it really looks so good the water is very clear that's all I mean I don't really do any maintenance at all I just add in some water when I see the water level is low and that's it and probably like once every three days or something like that you know no biggie no, but no, no mosquito because obviously it will be eaten by um, goldfish. Okay, now I have my uh, my Buddhas here for my mom, and uh, so I'm just gonna show you like what other plant that I put it in there. So I design my uh, water pond with the succulent. Basically, I have a succulent uh, garden at the front, and at the back are the one that. You know it's like a regular plant so i have here some of my succulent right here let me show you i have no idea the name so <laughs> i am i'm good with the name with the roses but not the succulent i have no idea what i grow so <laughs> just to give you some idea um why is it now succulent not all the succulent can take the 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 cold the, the frost well they can they can take certain freeze but like anything that's below 30 or 32 like below uh, freezing temperature you will need to uh, actually uh, cover them with a uh, insulation blanket and uh, then uh, they will they will do better um then they will not be dying okay so but like things like said like this is a sedum it's a uh, this is a lemon ball sedum Sodium, it can take on uh, the, the the very extreme corners very well, so you don't need to worry about this one. And more. Okay. So some of them. Aeonium will need some sort of the shade, so I'm not sure if this is actually a really good location for it because supposedly. It needs some shade, but so far it looks good, so I'm just gonna keep it right there that way. Yeah, I do have a, I do have a grow a lot of stuff, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is the hands and chicks. So hands and chicks, you can actually uh, put it out there, no problem with the frost. You don't need to protect it. So um, so just to just just uh to keep that in mind, okay. There go. These are like my collection. And they usually uh, they will bloom uh, during the springtime. 
So the best time to actually grow succulent is really spring. And uh, I have this, this is a eucalyptus uh, plant that I planted in spring. It looks pretty big already. I think it looks very interesting. It's like a big fan. You can see that. It's like a big, big fan. Let me show you on the other side. Can you see that? Isn't it look like a big fan? And my beautiful, beautiful Japanese mabel. So uh, there you go. So this is the small, the big one. I have a, a, a small one in the front yard that I'm going to show you later. But uh, this is the big one that I have. Oh, I love this one. This is the heavenly bamboo. Heavenly bamboo is really like a... Uh, you can say that it's uh, very evergreen. So it looks like this also in the winter time. And you can take very co cold temperature and look at the flower. I just have a flower. It does flower. Um, there you go. So this is my uh, my big pond. That's the question, then you said it Always saying, things you're regretting Can't erase the steps we're taking Can't go back to the time and place we met I was so upset But you made it all better Now it's messing with my head, yeah We don't say goodbye I still feel ghosts inside my chest No, we didn't learn our lesson But if you want, can we try again?
Right, so uh, I show you the big uh, fish pond just now and now it's evening time and I'm coming to show you the second uh, small uh, water feature that I have in my front yard. 
So uh, it is a very similar concept to uh, the one at the backyard. I got this, uh, this is the above ground um, pond. Let me show you. So it's basically uh, one of those, um, the, they call it the pond insert, but it's a hard one that you can get from uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. I think I got this from Home Depot. I don't even remember. I think it's a Home Depot and I got it for $35. So it's a very, very cheap one. And this one, I don't remember how many gallon already, but uh, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a good size for about three Comet goldfish. And uh, this is why I put in there. And uh, so the plant in there, I have a yam. So this is a black yam. You can see my uh, goldfish. This goldfish um, is very easy to maintain. Uh, this is another bad yam. So the yam is we just I just put in a pot and then just put it. There's a tree uh, seat around this insert and I just lift it out right there. And very easy. I have a same. It's the same filter that I got from the backyard, and I just leave it on. You know, for most of the time. And uh, so the fish I keep it in there is a, I put a, just a regular uh, comet goldfish. Let's see if I can find them. Let me show it to you. There you go. I found one. Um, so the maintenance of this one is uh, super, super easy for me. It's very, very easy because um, first of all, they are the food that they they usually take is like um, the what you call it the insect they take the algae they take the you know i have a lot of water plant in the pond so they just take those and they overwinter uh really 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 well as well you see that. they overwinter really well and um so uh, i don't even need to uh, bring them in or anything like that during the winter time like this tree has been through my winter last year so uh, they are basically just, you know, the, it's basically a thick layer of ice on the pond and they are still swimming down there. The key is do not feed them during the winter time and when they, they are like considered go to dormant at that time. But yeah, and uh, I have this, this is like a kind of like a water pond that I got from the, you know, those uh, place, the aquarium, the fish, selling the fish place and the comet is like really those 25 cent comet that I got it's nothing really uh, special but I think they are pretty and they are very easy to tap um it was small and now they are pretty big you can see so they're pretty happy in there um this water lily I got it from uh, Lowe's I think it's a ten dollars uh one of those ten dollars uh party uh, water lily it haven't bloomed yet I'm not sure why maybe it doesn't have enough sun here this corner but uh yeah but it's beautiful foliage Let's see. Let's see. so uh, there you go so this is my uh, it's I think all together it's about like I I bought the this is $35 and I buy the pop the palm is a little bit more expensive it's like I think it's $80 for that pop, for that pump and I put some some rock at the bottom you want to put some rock at the bottom because um, the rock will actually uh, it's a place for the, the good bacteria to actually uh, live on because you if you have a fish you want to have a good bacteria in your fish okay and then uh, I have some plant. This one is a, is a gift for my uh, friend Diana. Thank you, Diana. It grow back again, and and I still have tons of babies. I have tons of babies where I have no place to to put them. And uh, the water lily is ten dollars uh, from low. So this this I think this pond plant is like what? Also another ten dollars. I think it's ten dollars. And it grows so fast. You see, it, this is where they flower. Right here, this is their flower. Um, and this is how it looks like at the back. It's like more like brownish color. 
And then the front is, is like a lily pad. I think it's very cute. And um, they, they just grow so fast. And I think if I cut it off, it will. I just stuck it somewhere, it will grow again. So it's very cool. It's very, very cool. Like this is, this is actually my, uh, you know why this one? This is actually the black yam babies. And I have so many black yam baby around it. So, and, and all you do is very easy. You see this baby, you already have a root. So all you do is just stuck it in the water, in the in the in the in the pot like this. Just stuck it in, and then they will grow again. And then that's how they grow. And then they will grow big again. So it's very very easy. So uh, again, this is a good. It's it's always good to have a, a water feature in your garden because that's how you can actually actually attract the the the, the beneficial bugs and also of course the bird. So that they can eat, you know, the pests for you, like caterpillar and stuff. Like, I do not have much caterpillar in my garden at all, and I do not put a bird feeder. So now you know why. Okay, there you go. And it's so relaxing, don't you love it? I can wash them forever. All right. So hopefully it inspire you to um, do it. I think I built this pond like in an hour. I'm done. Like I'm just set this up in an hour. It's really, really a uh, simple things to do. So hopefully it kind of inspire you to go back and do it. So uh, hope it's helped.